I'm Liz Chiarello. I'm an assistant professor of sociology in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology. I'm a medical sociologist and a sociolegal scholar, so I do research at the intersection of medicine and law, um, and I'm currently doing research on the opioid crisis. I was recently awarded a National Science Foundation Career Award um, through the program in sociology and the program in law and social sciences, so it's jointly sponsored. Um, and so what that's going to do, it's going to fund me over the next five years to look at how the fields of healthcare and criminal justice are dealing with the opioid crisis. My work does touch on a lot of different disciplines and a lot of kind of interdisciplinary sorts of spaces. Um, I really see this issue as a socio-legal issue. Um, it's a way of thinking about law and society as they relate to one another. So a lot of what's happening um, with pharmacists and physicians working on the ground is um, how they're making sense of the law is also likely to affect how they're making sense of patients. Um, so that's part of it. Another piece of it is about professions. So um, how do these people understand themselves as professionals? How do they understand their professional obligations? Um, and one of the things that we're seeing with the opioid crisis that I think is really troubling um, is we're watching these professional worlds kind of turn upside down. So we're watching our healthcare providers act a lot more like law enforcement as they're monitoring their patients who come in. Physicians do urine drug screens on their patients to make sure that they're taking those drugs. Um, uh, watching physicians do random pill counts where they'll call their patient, be like, get here in two hours, I want to see how many pills are in your bottle. Um, so we're really watching our healthcare providers kind of take on this, this enforcement role that I think they didn't previously have to this extent. At the same time, we're watching our enforcement agents act more like healthcare providers. So they're administering naloxone to people who are overdosing. Um, we're seeing a lot of, uh, of addiction treatment in jails and in prisons. Um, we're watching enforcement do warm handoffs to treatment. Um, and I'm not saying these things are necessarily bad, but what I am saying is that it certainly muddles the professional role in ways that I think we should look at more closely. We talk about this as if it were an opioid crisis, but really what we have are two interrelated crises. We have an opioid crisis and a pain crisis. Um, and at the intersection of those are the fields of healthcare and criminal justice. Um, and at the intersection of those are also issues of pain, addiction, and drug diversion. And so there's a lot going on there and there are a lot of moving pieces. And I think the mistake that we've made in the past when, we've kind of, when the pendulum has kind of swung from a more conservative approach to pain management to a more liberal approach to pain management, I mean that just in terms of opioids, is that um, we treat the people who are struggling with substance use disorder and people who are dealing with chronic pain as if they are in a zero-sum game. Um, and so we often prioritize the needs of one over the other and create a lot of unintended consequences. And so my hope is that by talking to people who are enmeshed in this issue um, from multiple perspectives, that we'll be able to find some kind of middle ground where we, we don't eliminate opioids for treating pain um, and we find more meaningful ways of dealing with pain, but, um, but not just by denying people care, um, but also that we find more meaningful approaches to dealing with substance use disorder that doesn't just involve abstinence and doesn't just involve a pill.